Hi, Jason Brennan and Todd Helm of Rupes USA. We are happen to be here at the Auto Geek uh, Garage down in Palm City, Florida. And while we're here, one of the questions that we get asked often, Todd, whether it's here or anywhere else that we're out traveling, is how do I know what pad to use? How do I know what compound? Uh, What's the right combination? And what works for what paint? Right. Do I just slap a pad on there and go? Yes. You do? Yeah, no, it, you're right, Jason. And it's one of the most common questions we get at our, our train events at the Bigfoot Academy out in Denver, any of the road show events is how do I, pick the right combination to remove the defects, give me the best finish, and do it in the least amount of time or the least amount of steps possible. So that's where we introduced the concept of a test spot. And a test spot's been around for a long time, but what it allows us to do is dial in our process in a specific area and make sure that's gonna work. So here we have this AC Cobra. We've put in a 3000 grit sand mark, and I've lined up all of the polishing pads and Bigfoot polishing compounds in the DA lineup. So moving kind of what will be from your left to right, we have the blue microfiber, blue wool, blue foam, yellow microfiber, right, in the fine line, the yellow microfiber, the medium wool pad, and the fine yellow foam, and then also the white ultra fine microfiber and the white DA ultra fine foam pads, and then the, the corresponding color, uh, color coordinated compounds. So our blue coarse, blue fine, and the Uno pure or the white ultra fine. So right there, there, if we don't mix and match colors and we just stay in our color coordinated world, we have eight possible combinations. So we have a paint right here that we haven't polished. Um, I haven't done a test spot yet, so I don't even know how it's gonna react, but I know I have a pretty severe paint defect. Now, what I wanna find is how do I remove that paint defect in the least amount of steps with the least aggressive method possible? Because not only do I wanna get these defects out, but ideally I don't wanna create a second step if I don't have to. I would love to do all my polishing in one step. And not only do I wanna do it in one step, but I don't wanna to remove too much paint. On modern cars, on OEM finishes, paint just keeps getting thinner and thinner. So we wanna to try to find the least aggressive method to maintain paint thickness on the surface, but also to maximize our profit. So looking again, we have kind of eight, eight combinations in our lineup. What Rupus recommends is starting somewhere in the middle. So that might be the yellow microfiber, the yellow wool, or the yellow foam with the yellow polish. You'd be amazed at what kind of correction ability this combination can produce. Um, many, many times in a class, we grab the yellow wool. This is my favorite. What we're gonna start with here, the DA Fine Polish, the DA uh, Medium Yellow Wool Pad, and it's amazing not only the correction that that combination can achieve, but the finish quality too. So when we do the test spot, which we're gonna jump into here in one second, we're gonna get one of three possible results. Result one, which is what we're hoping for, we remove all the target defects, the paint looks glossy, and we've created that holy grail one-step combination that we're just gonna stamp out on the rest of the car and hopefully get that result on the rest of the paint. Uh, the second, thing or the second uh, uh, result you'll get is that you get shiny scratches. So you don't remove the, the target defects, but you enhance the gloss. So that tells us that on this scale, we would need to move more aggressive, right? We're gonna need something with a little more polishing power to remove those defects. So we have a number of options more aggressive if the yellow wool and the DA fine doesn't remove it. And then the third option is that we remove all of the target defects. So that might happen when we go more aggressive or right off the start, but the surface looks a little hazy. Because we're talking about a dual action random orbital polisher, we're not gonna see a traditional hologram or swirl mark, but the surface might have what we call like a pad haze or a DA haze. So in this case, we're gonna need something less aggressive. So, so we may need a second refining step or we can repeat our test spot with something less aggressive that hopefully will remove the defects but not generate the haze. Again, the ultimate goal is to find the least aggressive combination that removes the defects, followed if necessary by the least aggressive combination that will enhance the gloss and remove, remove any like artifact haze. So we're gonna dive right in that. I'm gonna select the DA uh, yellow compound and the medium wool pad. I'm gonna throw that in a LHR Bigfoot 21, the Mark III. We'll show you guys how we prime the wool pad and then we're gonna put it in real time on this paint and see what kind of result we get. And then if we have to make an adjustment, we're gonna do that in real time so you can see exactly how Rupus imagines this process to go. So the first step in doing the test spot after we select the pad and the compound is to prime the pad. 
Now, Rupus specifically recommends priming pads because what it helps us do is get that pad to peak performance sooner. Uh, especially if you think about, this is the, the yellow wool pad, but if you think about this or the microfiber, I want all of those fibers engaging and doing their job right away, especially if I'm doing a test spot because I wanna replicate what normal polishing performance is. If I only add a couple dots of compound and, and do my test spot, I'm not gonna reach maximum performance or get a true read on the paint until probably my third or fourth application. So in order to prime any Rupus tool, we recommend Speed 2. But Todd, what if it's a Nano? Speed 2. What if it's a Mini? Speed 2. What if it's the Rotary? Speed 2. So right, the point is, we'll just set it on Speed 2. If this was a foam pad on a dual action, we, we would say draw a cross or an X. And the reason we recommend an X or a cross is because product will kind of migrate over the face of the foam really easily. So now, as soon as I run it for a few seconds, it's gonna spread and I have a prime pad. With wool and particularly microfiber, it needs a little more help, right? There's a lot more surface area. Now, what I like to do is starting on the outside is I'm just gonna draw kind of a thick spiral. This is a lot of product, but it's not extreme. I'm not globbing it on there. I'm just kind of drawing it on. And here I have two options. Option one is I can take, a, take this tool and I can use one of the pad claw tools and kind of butter it, right? And that'll spread it around, or I can apply it on the paint and run it for about 20 seconds. I prefer the latter, so I'm gonna throw the quarter over my shoulder. I'm gonna come right here where we have the sand mark. I'm gonna put medium pressure. I'm not pushing hard, but I don't wanna just let it float because I don't wanna spit all that product everywhere. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of pressure and I'm gonna run it for about 20 seconds. Kind of move it around a little bit. And that's it. So we would consider that a prime pad. Always inspect your pad when you're done priming it. If you see any uh, bald spots or dry spots, add a few more drops and off we go. So obviously this wasn't the test spot yet, but I can still use my test spot to get a good read on the paint. So when I wipe this off, I'm looking at the result. And what I see is not shocking to me. And that is, at least initially, that looks like we have 100% defect removal and a really, really high gloss. So now I'm gonna do my test spot. So that's gonna allow me to talk a little bit more about how Rupus recommends polishing with their system. The reload is gonna be two to four drops, uh, pea size drops. I like to use four initially because that helps finish priming the pad in case there are any dry spots I don't see. But after that, I'm gonna use two. Always, it's a good idea to always close the uh, lid and just prevent any of the chemicals from outgassing. I'm gonna shove it in my pocket. So now how large of a section should I polish? Rupus would tell you about six times the size of the pad. Now that's a variable. If I shrink my polishing section, but keep everything the same, it's gonna give me a more aggressive result. So if I wanna remove heavy scratches and defects, I shrink my section area. If I'm just doing my fin final finish and I'm removing a light haze, I can kind of expand it. But if you call us at Rupus Technical Support, we're gonna tell you six times the size of the pad. So that way a 15 is a little smaller than the 21. The Nano is obviously gonna be a lot smaller than any of those. The Mini may be in the middle. For polishing speed, uh, speed three to four. I'm gonna kind of roll it up to three here. Generally, I find uh, that with a wool pad, I can use a little less speed. There's less surface grab, so I don't need all of that extra movement to, to maintain uh, the orbital and rotational pattern on the paint. So I'm gonna try speed three initially. I'm gonna use moderate pressure. I won't say no pressure, and I'm not pushing hard, but I'm gonna engage that wool to the paint, and I'm gonna go over my area of about six times the size of the pad uh, two times total, kind of going left, right, left, or right, left, right, uh, you'll, and, and try to keep my polishing section to about 40 seconds. So the goal here is with proper technique and a good test spot, we might be able to go from a 3000 grit sand scratch to a finished surface in one step. Cord over my shoulder, I'm gonna get comfortable. First, I personally like to spread the product, the product out over the area. So I would say that's about one, two, three, four, five, six times the size of the pad. I'm overlapping the sanded area just a little bit. And now I'm gonna go over this area two times in total, or three times and then three times back and forth, uh, in about 40 seconds. Light pressure and I'm just moving it slow. 
Obviously, I want to keep it flat to the surface. So that's one time. And now I can either come back left or right, or I can go up and down. It, it doesn't make a big difference, but I'm just going to repeat my initial pattern. If I wanted a little more correction, or if that didn't work, I could try a third spot. But I like to do all my polishing in 30 to 45 seconds. I want to get on with the job. And, and honestly, over cycling is one of the issues that we, we see a lot, where people are losing efficiency and spending too long polishing. Most of that correction happens pretty quickly. So again, a very mild polish with a medium wool pad on a 3000 grit pad mark. And when we wipe away the residue, take little bites out of it with a, a short nap, Powell, you can see that we have 100% scratch removal and a really high gloss. The gloss looks better than the rest of the, the Cobra that we haven't polished. So in this case, and we'll have to look at it with an inspection light to make sure there's no lingering haze, but it's very likely that we found that holy grail result. We got result number one, complete defect removal with an amazing gloss. It's one of the advantages of the Bigfoot Random Orbital system, and we were able to accomplish that in about 30 seconds. So. The paint correction on this vehicle could go, on this vehicle could go really quick. And just by doing a test spot, we can dial it in, save us time. And if we're a professional detailer, put a lot of more money in our pockets.